Okay, <clears throat> so in this class, I am going to discuss that is the scattering by atoms. They are arranged in a crystal lattice. So scattering by an atom arranged in a crystal lattice. Let us suppose that every point, every point, so assume that this is a regularly arranged uh, crystal lattice and these are the point of crystal lattice which consist of some basis okay and this basis may be some atoms or molecules so initially let us suppose that every point of a lattice is occupied by an atom of same kind <clears throat> and the centers of atom that are coinciding with this lattice point right the atomic electron does form itself as a group of scattering point so they are actually forming a group of scattering point associated with each lattice point so for each lattice point there exist some group of scattering points okay now the atomic scattering factor the term atomic scattering factor or the form factor <coughs> that is the measure of measure of the amplitude scattered by an atom compared to that of a single classical electron okay so this is basically <coughs> The measure of this atomic scattering factor which tells us that is the measure of amplitude scattered by an atom compared to that of a single classical electron so atomic scattering factor is the ratio of amplitude scattered by an atom this is the amplitude of that radiation divided by same thing amplitude of radiation that is scattered by a single classical electron okay so this is basically called the atomic scattering factor now to calculate this atomic scattering factor let each atom contains only one electron so my 
cryo resolution is each atom contains one electron and the position of which with respect to the center of the atom the position of this electron with respect to so position with respect to the center of the atom is given by this vector r okay <clears throat> so the phase difference at a distance large compared to atomic dimensions between the wave scattered by the electron and one supposed coincide with the atomic center is basically k times is dot r right so that is basically the phase difference of the disturbance at a large distance compared to that of atomic dimension now assume that Now assume that the vector S, this vector is basically normal to the plane that would reflect that reflect the direction of incident ray to the scatter so this is the normal to the plane that reflect basically the direction of incident ray to the scatter right <coughs> and its magnitude the magnitude of this normal basically if I consider this is modulus of S this is given by 2 times sin theta where 2 theta where this 2 theta is the angular Right? Now, how do you calculate the phase difference between incident and the scatter ray. So let us consider that these two are basically two lattice point one is A2 another is A1. Now two rays they are coming along this direction is represented by this vector S0. Now after scattering the rays are moving along this direction. So this scattered ray is represented by this vector S. And as I said earlier that this electron basically have the distance from the center of this lattice is given by this R vector. Now we have to calculate the path difference between 
this two rays who is going to interfere basically so we have to draw two normals on these two rays now assume that this is n and this will be n right so if these two are normal Okay, now <coughs> assume that the direction of the incident wave normal, so direction of this incident wave normal is represented by S0, this vector, and A and A1, this A1 and A2 scattered the incident wave and we considered that the phase difference between two scattered wavelets that are arriving at some point Q which is at a distance which is at a distance capital R which lies at a distance so say assume that this distance is capital R which is very large compared to that of length so capital R is much much greater than small r right so the direction of this a1 q and direction of this a2 q may be taken as parallel right and each may be defined by a unit vector this two may be defined by unit vector s Okay, so the incident wave is S0 and the scattered wave normal is S, right? So if these two are represent the unit vector of uh, along these two directions, so I can uh, say that the path difference between these two wave train is basically A1N minus A2N. So this is the path difference between two rays. Okay, now if you calculate the path difference in terms of vector notation, this A1N is basically R times cos theta. Okay, so R dot this s okay so this is basically r dot s minus this r dot s zero right so i can write this at r dot s minus s zero fine so assume that this is your equation number one right now you have to shift these two vectors this s and s0 in a common origin okay and what you will get first draw a coordinate system and you just move this vector to this point now what you will get you will get that this is the direction of your S vector that is scattered vector this vector and this is the incident vector direction so you have to put this as incident vector is 0 right <clears throat> now this path difference this line basically represent S minus s0 okay and i write this vector as s okay so the vector s minus s0 has a simple geometrical representation so this have 
a simple geometrical interpretation how now let us consider that this is the origin this point is b this point is a and these two angle are basically theta okay now if is it uh, is it so then then i can write that let o a and o b these two represent a unit vector is 0 and this is unit vector s then a b represent unit vector s minus s g okay from this figure you can see that if if o b is s and o a is s0 then a b must be s minus s0 okay and it is uh, correctly evident from this picture if you look at this picture then you can see that a b vector a b this vector so some of the rays they are coming from here and they are scattered by this atom along this direction so this is basically the crystal plane right now this a b what does it mean this represent the normal on the crystal thing that would basically reflect the incident ray along the scatter direction right so so this a b represent basically normal to the crystal plane right so as this is normal to the crystal plane then the plane conventionally called as reflecting plane now this theta has a special significance this is not an incident angle but this is the complementary of incident angle which i have already told in Bragg's law so this theta is called glancing angle right now from the figure you can see that i again want to draw this figure so this is s this is s0 this is b this is a this is o and this angle is theta right so what is the value of this s minus is 0 so modulus of s minus is 0 this will be if this is unit vector so this is also a unit vector right so as this is unit vector so 1 into sine theta is this half portion and 1 into sine theta is this half portion so the value of this is 2 times sine theta right since this s and s0 these two are basically unit vector since s and s0 are basically unit vectors 
right <clears throat> now the phase difference between these two rays if i call this as phi okay so this phi will be the phase difference between two rays that are basically uh, meet at any external point Q which I have told in the first figure. So the phase difference between two wavelets that are scattered by two points that is A1 and A2 in the first figure is basically K into R dot S minus S0 right where k is nothing but a wave vector whose value is twice pi by lambda right so substitute this as k r into s as this s equal to s minus s0 okay now let us now suppose that the direction of scattering to be that corresponding to the spectrum so that the normal this normal corresponding to the plane okay the radiation scattered by the electron supposed to be coincident with that coincident with the lattice point will now be in phase which from all the points okay so what i uh, should say here that the direction of scattering would be corresponding to the spectrum so if this is chosen as the direction of scattering this must be perpendicular to the plane okay now from this configuration if you see here this particular amount of phase appear in the uh, in the between the incident and the scatter tree then from the point given configuration we will say that the amplitude amplitude due to a given configuration will will be exponential of this phase so e to the power i phi this amount amplitude will uh, change okay due to a just by a single electron as i have told that each lattice point consists of an atom which have only single electron at its uh, orbital so as this amount of phase uh, amplitude change so this amplitude will be e to the power i k r dot s right okay now assume that there exist So as I said that there exist total n number of atoms, so there will be n number of electron. Okay. Right? Now if n is large, the probability that 
an electron lies within a given volume corresponding to the probability of single electron will be n times greater right as there exist n number of atoms but <coughs> within a certain amount of volume this electro a uh, single atom are chosen in a random fashion we are not selecting only a particular volume but we are selecting in a random volume and we see that whether there exist total n number of atoms or not now assume that rho r is the charge density Uh, uh, rho r is the density of atoms so that this rho r beta this represent basically probability now uh, let us consider that rho r is basically represented as psi star psi which is the probability density of an electron that in any atom okay probability of an electron in any atom that lies within a volume element data now if rho is the probability uh, density then the probability basically integration rho r into data so this is basically the probability okay now if this is the probability of an electron uh, of an atom to lie within the volume element this data okay so uh, basically this into data so this into data this represent basically the probability okay now this the position vector of that particular electron from the midpoint which is defined by me in the crystal is basically r okay so this r is nothing but the position vector of the electron from any arbitrary rigid chosen center then the amplitude then the amplitude of scattered radiation which is scattered by that particular composite atom situated at any lattice point that is basically total n number of atoms are there integration rho r into d tau is a probability density and obviously this amplitude is increased by e to the power i k s dot r right so this is basically the amplitude scattered by the composite atom now this integration integration over data is taken throughout the space okay so the amplitude that is scattered by whole lattice and that scattering is along the direction of spectra which we are going to study is same as it would be if 
each lattice point were occupied by an electron of scattering that is f times the amplitude right so what i should say the amplitude given by whole lattice is f times that of amplitude scattered by a single at electron single classical electron right then the amplitude scattered by the single classical electron f this would be taken as integration probability density e to the power i k s dot r times theta okay now let us draw a picture for better understanding so we are going to choose a volume element uh, like this circular one okay this is the spherical volume element and within this volume element the incident uh, this is basically the crystal plane which i am choosing now this is the arbitrary center and this incident ray is coming as s0 vector and the reflected ray is given by s vector so if you enlarge this and draw the perpendicular so this is s minus s0 now this vector i want to shift it at here so this is s basically s minus s0 okay so this vector is basically s minus s0 now what i should take i should take any arbitrary region like this and this region makes an angle alpha with this normal and the thickness of this angular thickness is d alpha now if r be the radius and this is the glancing angle theta zero okay so r basically this r makes an angle alpha as this d alpha is very small with the direction of s then i should say that k s dot r this is basically 2 k sin theta r into cos theta from this geometrical analysis so s dot r is equal to k sin theta and k s dot r i can write from this geometrical analysis twice k sin theta r cos theta right so this function i can uh, 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 sorry cos alpha sorry this should be cos alpha so from this geometrical analysis i can write that this whole term assuming this twice k into sin theta as mu so this would be mu r cos theta okay now mu equal to k 2k sin theta which is basically 4 pi divided by lambda now assuming that this rho r this depends only the magnitude of r and not only on the direction okay that is the arrangement of atom in any spherical symmetry symmetrical one and this taken as elementary volume of the spherical cell of radius r so in this figure as i am choosing the spherical cell of radius r okay this is basically the spherical cell of radius r then the volume element b tau is chosen as twice pi times r sin theta r d alpha into dr 
right? So this is basically the volume element uh, chosen by me in that particular region. So, and uh, uh, obviously putting mu does uh, we can write that from this. Uh, I want to simplify this. So this is twice by r square. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. This should be not all not theta. I am confusing with theta and alpha, but this should be alpha. So twice pi r sine alpha from this geometry, you can write it down. This is r, this is alpha, this is d alpha. So the thickness will be uh, uh, volume element of uh, this minus volume element of this. So if you choose this volume element by making this radius as this is r, so this should be r cos alpha. So you can assume that so this radius will be r sin alpha so basically 2 pi r sin alpha into r d alpha into d alpha. so 2 pi r square into sin alpha d alpha dr now putting mu r cos alpha equal to x okay what should we get so dx will be minus mu r sin alpha d alpha as alpha is the variable okay then if should be integration r equals to 0 to infinity integration alpha equals to 0 to pi from previous form this is rho r e to the power i as uh, here is e to the power uh, from the previous figure you will see that here is k is dot r so i have to write e to the power i mu r cos alpha now the volume basically 2 pi r square into sin alpha d alpha dr okay so this is basically f now what should be the limit of alpha and x here if you replace these things by s so now if uh, i am replacing this whole thing by x so what should i get i should get here this should be minus of r equal to 0 to infinity <coughs> as here exists a minus sign so this comes outside so x equal to mu r to minus mu r as you see here x equal to mu r cos alpha this alpha can runs from 0 to pi so range of alpha is 0 to pi now for alpha equals to 0 the value of x is mu r so x runs from mu r and alpha equals to pi the value of this is minus mu r so this should be minus mu r so 2 pi r square rho r dr e to the power i x dx divided by mu r right now if you integrate this whole term what you will get you will what you will get okay you will get just r equals to 0 to infinity keep at this now this should be 2 pi r square divided by so if you integrate the whole thing you just integrate the power i k x into dx divided by mu r into rho r dr now x equal to 
plus mu r 2 minus mu r dx of to the power i x into t x. <coughs> right? So, now if you integrate, if you integrate this, what you will get? You will get that this equals to r equals to 0 to infinity 2 pi r square divided by mu r into rho r dr. Now exponential remains a to the power i mu r minus to the power minus i mu r. So this should be 4 pi r, r square r equal to 0 to infinity rho r sin mu r <coughs> divided by mu r as the value of these things is sin mu r so into dr okay now if you assume that if you assume that this u r dr this is basically the probability that an electron lies between the radii r thick to r plus dr in any atom then the value of this u r is basically 4 pi r square into rho r as this is the probability. So from equation 1, uh, from this equation I can write that this particular term is equivalent to this u r. So the whole thing becomes as f equals to integration 0 to infinity u r sin mu r divided by mu r times phi r. So, this is basically the atomic scattering factor. So, this is basically the atomic scattering factor of an atom. Now, the scattering factor f is spherically symmetric and this f should be spherically symmetric and obviously real. The calculation is similar if instead of a single electron, each atom contains about z number of electrons. Only the z uh, becomes in that case basically u r dr in basically that case what is represent the probability. So this would be summation of r u r times d r. So, u in basically the probability density of nth electron which resides in some atom. So, uh, I can say that from this proposition, this u in d r if uh, this, this represent the z basically the atomic number of this particular atom where z is the number of electron in that single atom right and if you understand you can have the 
form of this mu r is known, then you can calculate the structure, atomic uh, scattering factor of an electron from ultimate from this relation. Okay, so with this, I am ending the class of atomic scattering factor. Thank you.